Yeah, I grew up in a really musical family. Like my dad, he's he's an, he could have been a famous opera singer, like okay. if he would have gone for it. And and that's something that influenced me a lot too, is like not being afraid. You know, like he yeah. he just told me time and time again, like oh, I was gonna do this, and then I was like scared, you know, to do it, and I was yeah. like. I, I'm so grateful that he went through that so that I don't have to go through that. Yeah. And, but that's if I learn from him. And I realized that I was doing it, you know. But my dad, he was really musical. And Another episode of Adversity King. So we've got childhood friend of mine, childhood really good friend of mine, uh, Bobby Taylor. So musician, artist, and uh, just an overall good dude, bro. So how you been? Yes, sir, dude. Doing so good lately. Yeah. It, it's been like, I've had the most crazy past few months too. Recently yeah. was like, I just spent, uh, I as you know, like spent like three years in Florida, yes. like coming in and, um, the three years in Florida shaped me a lot and just yeah. moving back and forth, like almost living like a little gypsy life and stuff. Yeah. Like, I lived with like millionaires, lived with like famous YouTubers, lived with like gaming streamers, yeah. like Instagram spice. Yeah, sellers, you know, like yeah, just crazy uh, happenings that just like kind of went around like that, and uh, um, it was just like a lot of really good uh, timing with all of it because it was like I've never had like a year where I haven't been mentored by somebody. Yeah, like in the entrepreneurial space, which was really cool because I'm like, all right, God, so you're like taking me to all these different places, and like I'm yeah. like meeting all these people, but why do you keep like putting me with like entrepreneurs and like these different people who are like yeah. It, like it stressed me out because I was like always like this carefree like I don't want my, like I don't care yeah, about yeah. money like whatever but um as I realized I'm just, just like if you're like genuinely passionate about anything like money can flow from it if you're like yeah, intentional yeah. with it you know so yeah. like with music I've just recently decided I was I was just working so I came back from Pittsburgh to Pittsburgh whenever COVID hit yeah and um my, I ended up living with my parents. They ended up getting divorced in like November. Yeah. And so then I was like, well, I'm not hanging around for all this to like yeah. go down and like watch them like struggle. So I went into downtown Pittsburgh and ended up living on the South side. And like, it was really cool. And like, it did yeah. a lot of good in me, you know, to like network with people. But then I started to get wrapped up in like the party lifestyle and the party scene and like, um, really started partying hard. And it was just like, kind of like Friday, Saturday, you know, maybe Sunday, you know, and then it was just soon it was like, Mondays, I was getting blacked out, you know, Tuesdays blacked out, you yeah. know, like, and so it just kept the, being the cycle, and I was like, I'm doing fine, you know, I ended up being, like, a private investigator over there working for, like, a really, really smart, like, genius entrepreneur out yeah. in Pittsburgh, um, his name's Bob Cresson, like, he, he trained me in, like, the private investigation space, he trained me as, like, um, just in the entrepreneurial area too. And yeah. like, just it, that was the way that I started to learn to communicate with people. Like, yeah, yeah. you know, do you know, like that communication skills to like communicate with entrepreneurs? Like you just, there's like a totally different way to communicate. Yeah. Like he'll be, he'd be like, write me a report on these files and like slam a file down on my desk. And I'd be like, I wasn't even working on these files. Like I didn't yeah. even do this case. He's like, do it. He's like, I need this done right now. And yeah, I'm yeah. like, Okay, and I just, like, start typing, and he's, like, that's the kind of drive. Like, you just need to, like, do things for people. Yeah. Like, because they don't have time. It's worth less of, like, less to them yeah. to just do it themselves, you know, if it's, like, if they're having to, like, spend four hours with you on, like, how to write a report or whatever. Yeah. Or just, just make it up, you know? And then you just start to learn. Yeah. Um, so doing that, I just started to be able to, like, take a little bit more control of myself, you know, where it was, like, I stopped looking for leadership direction from other people and, uh just started kind of directing myself. And I, I actually went to this church service um, the one night. I've been leading worship, like, in Pittsburgh. And, I mean, I went to a church service the one night, and this guy called me out, and he was just like, hey, like, God's been telling me that you're, like, really, really struggling. Like, and yeah. I want to pray for you. And he prayed for me that night. I stopped drinking completely that night. Yeah. Um, went five months clean on alcohol, but I was still smoking and, like, doing some drugs. And I was like, ah, I'm going to, like... I, I'm fine, you know, and then yeah. I was like, I want to get clean from everything. I'm like, if I'm going to give up alcohol and I'm going to like start to give up, you know, like weed or whatever, you know, it was like, I have to, you know, I'm going to give it all up, you know, to get yeah. better. And uh, the second that I gave everything up and like got completely clean, I was like, my whole life just like shifted even within like the past couple months. Yeah. And, um, it's been a totally different experience for me now being able to, you know, finally be clean. And, um, and I say clean, like 
lightly because it's like you can still like enjoy it. I'm just not addicted to partying anymore and like wasting my time like doing yeah. the the party thing because that was literally what was holding me back. I spent two and a half years. I wrote Pollen whenever I first moved back to my first single, um, moved back to Pittsburgh and um I I like was so in my head about all of it. I was like, I don't think that I'm gonna be able to release like pollen and um and so I just kept like pushing it back. And so like my, my producer and I would just keep working on this song like over and over again. And I'd go back in and I'd be like, we need to change the guitars. We need to change the vocals. I need to re-record yeah. this. And I was just like making up all these excuses. Like what, you know, I was just kept making up excuses. Let's let's backtrack for, for the audience and, and just for, for the listeners, viewers, whoever. And uh, I really want to kind of get an idea. Like, I remember you being musically gifted at a very young age. You know what I mean? Because we, we've probably known each other 11, 12 when we probably first got introduced. So, but but was, who introduced, like, how, when did you discover that you were, you had some, some bit of talent? <laughs> and like, did, does, do your parents, did somebody else, could someone else sing? Yeah, I grew up in a really musical family. Like, my dad, he's, he's, an, he could have been a famous opera singer, like, okay. if he would have gone for it. And, and that's something that influenced me a lot, too, is like, not being afraid. You know, like, he, yeah. he just told me time and time again, like, oh, I was going to do this. And then I was like, scared, you know, to do it. And I was yeah. like, I, I'm so grateful that he went through that so that I don't have to go through that. Yeah. And, but that's if I learned from him. And I realized that I was doing it, you know. But my dad, he was really musical. And um, my mom could also sing. And then um, I actually was doing so horribly in school that my mom just, like, started grounding me for, like, quarters at a time of school. And yeah. so I was like, I'm so bored. I'm going to just, like, start playing an instrument. Because I grew up, like, playing the piano. Yeah. And so I got, like, an ear for music from that. And, like, being able to... Piano was really good for me. But yeah. I hated it so much. So I quit. And um, and then I ended up picking up guitar in, like, 10th grade. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I sang that. for my family. Like, I feel like you had guitar before that, though. I thought, I thought you were doing guitar, like, when we were in that... Uh, what, what was... What, what did Pastor Elaine... What was that... Like Camp Souls? Yeah. Like maybe Camp it Souls. was before yeah, then. Maybe it was, it was a little before. bit. Maybe maybe I was singing. I don't know. Yeah. Like, I genuinely, I think that, like, I started learning it probably, like, maybe, like, ninth, tenth grade. Yeah. And I think that I definitely did some work, like, real early on, yeah. like, doing, like, worship with Word of Life or whatever. And, yeah. like, I remember being in, like, youth group, like, doing yeah. some guitar. Yeah, you led, you led worship at youth group a lot, too. Yeah. I remember that. And so it was, it was really cool. And like, so doing that, I actually turned 18 and, um, like started to do like music, like almost full time. I started to be, you know, get a little bit known in, in the, uh, Christian circles, you know, around Pittsburgh. And, yeah. um, I started to do this thing called like ladder glory, um, ministries. And I was, uh, leading worship for them and they like did this little revival thing in Pittsburgh and it ended up being a really big deal Yeah, and um, they ran that for like almost six months straight like almost every night of the week I was leading worship somewhere in Pennsylvania Yeah, and um, it started to open up to different states and like I had people like people would follow me around to come like listen to the worship and like yep. to come worship and I was like this is so cool like I would love to do music like full time and like I feel like work felt like worship really was like my call and then as I got older, I just felt God, like, sharing with me, like, to think bigger than, like, church worship and, and like, what my uh, vision of worship was, you yeah. know, like, worship in, like, a normal sense is, like, connecting with God through, like, music, but worship is in, like, every aspect of our lives, like, yeah. how good we do something, you know, how, whatever we do, yeah, facts. and um, the way that uh, I ended up I ended up moving down to Florida to go to Bible school in Tampa, and then yeah. I did a year of that. It, it was good, you know, and I met a girl there and then got engaged in Jupiter, Florida, and then got unengaged and then moved back to Tampa yeah. again. And I was doing music in West Palm Beach, and that was where I first discovered, like, the kind of, like, bar scene. Like, there were really nice bars out there, and I started to make money, like, doing music like yeah. that. And it, I was like, it's not, like, really that I want to do this for money, but it's like, it's so, I, but then you have to realize that you have to make money, you know, yeah. like you don't, you want, you're like, I don't want to sell my passion for money and I don't want yeah. to think of it that way. But like, that's literally what you're supposed to do with your gifts is like, yeah. it's like the parable of the talents. Like if you don't, really thinking that if you don't, yeah. that's, that like rang in my head, bro, for like the past like three months now. Yeah. And, um, 
like fast forward, that's, that's how I ended up in music and, and like how I ended up, you know, at this point where I've, uh, I actually was about to start a commercial electric job recently, like pay me like real good and like maybe start a trade. And yeah. I, I mean, I've been like a private investigator. I've been like, I've worked at American Eagle corporate, you know, yeah. like working these different jobs and it just felt like I never fit into the places. And even though I did a good job, it was like, there was always something like driving me out. Yeah. And I was like, what is this? And it wasn't like fear and it wasn't that I was trying to, um, it wasn't that I was trying to run from the work because I love working. Like yeah. I love being exhausted. Like yeah. I, you can ask like Abby, like I, I seriously have just been going, like I've exhausted myself in yes. Chicago already. And it's been like yeah. almost a week, you know? Yeah. But, um, we just go and I, I, I have like intense FOMO all the time. Yeah. Like, but I think that's like almost a gift because I don't like miss anything. Yeah. Like in the other night we, we were just like at a concert and it's just like one thing after another, you know, like, uh, God just giving us signs like yeah. every step of the way, like you're supposed to be in Chicago even. And it, like, it was just the dumbest thing, like just wild yeah, yeah. what's happened, but just a cool sign that happened even while I've been in Chicago. And it's just always felt like that direction yeah, yeah. for me. So, um, recently was going to start this electric job and, um, I just felt God like speak to me and he was like, Hey, I, I want you to like realize this is you going into another, like probably six to 12 month season of you working, coming out on the other side with maybe like a couple grand, you know? Yeah. But yeah. like, what are you going to do with it? Like what, what's your goal here? And like, where are you going? Like, what yeah. are you driving towards? Like if I start driving in the complete opposite direction from music, and I think that I'm going to be a musician, you know, I, because I have the contacts and I have like the people, you know, yeah. like I'm basically just searching for investment at this point and like yeah. manage like managers. Yeah. And, um, because I'm ready to start my career with music and I've, I've given up so much just over and over again, like, Oh, I'm losing my creativity. I need to like stop working, you know, not stop working, yeah. but like transition to something that I can like manage. And I'm like, Oh my God, I could literally just get in a car and start playing shows. Like literally use my telemarketing skills, call down this list of like a hundred bars in the area and book up my entire week. Yeah. Like a manager, manage my own damn self, you know? Like, yeah, exactly. And uh, I was like, this, this is so much easier than I thought it was. And I've been making it so complex for the past two years that I've just been sitting in Pittsburgh, like rotting, you know? Yeah. And it, it was like a wake up call to me because not that it was any wasted time. Like a lot of people were, you know, I, I feel like a lot of people got like touched through like me being in Pittsburgh and, um, I've helped a lot of people there, Yeah. you know, but like God's going to make you a light wherever and he's going to use you wherever yeah. you are. And, and it's just like, if you want to do it, you know, I, Absolutely. I'm not a trash person, you yeah. know, like, yeah. and so, I mean, I guess you just make that effect anywhere if you're not just like a rude person. Yeah. Facts. So I was like, I need to like push towards like what I do feel like my gift is, which is like music, you know, yeah. and like utilize that talent. And I'm like, I'm a videographer. So like use my own videography, you know, use yeah. my own graphic design, use my own, like, it, it like, it, I have like an entrepreneur brain. And so I have like all of these different setups of like different things. So Abby and I both design clothes. So, yeah. um, we're actually thinking of setting up a venue in Livingston County. Okay. Um, where's that in New York? It's okay. about 30 minutes South of Rochester. And, um, that's something we've been thinking about heavily. We just went up to, I was just in Rochester for like the past two weeks before I came to Chicago. I came home for one day and then like drove out to Chicago for this. Yeah. Wow. And, um, and so we, while we were in Rochester, we ended up in the middle of like an arts revival in Livingston County. Okay. And, um, it was like these small farm towns, like small farm, like villages, but they're like really cute, like little townships. Yeah. And, um, but the art community, the art culture and community there was just like mind blowing. And I was like, I've never been anywhere that I felt like so welcomed, you know, Pittsburgh gets like pretty stagnant. Yeah. yeah and, uh, I, it, it's like the glass ceiling of Pittsburgh is what it's always felt like to me. And I've just watched so many artists like literally go for 10 years, like pushing and working and like the economy is not all that good there yeah. either. So like you're just struggling against like a horrible pay rate and yeah. then like increasing rent on top of that and increasing bills and everybody's just like wants to charge more for food and stuff yeah. because everything's more expensive now, yeah. you know, especially post COVID. And so 
I was like, I feel like I'm fighting like a losing battle. So I literally packed up all my stuff and pulled like a Gary Vaynerchuk and moved in with my dad again. Yep. And I'm like, I'm literally going to use this as like a storage unit and just yep. start traveling. And so I kind of gave up the uh, electric job and um, I'm going to work just for, you know, I work a valet job right now. So yeah. I'm going to just keep valeting and doing that in the meantime, like whenever I'm home and then scheduling over those weeks, you yeah. know, when I'm home and making money and out I still of, leave out of Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then start traveling out. Yeah, dope, dude. I feel like, just like you're doing, just go thousand percent into the music. You're, you should. I feel like you should make millions off your music. That's just from what I I remember. You know what I mean? And that was us fucking twelve years old or something. So Bro, seriously. I was like, Shh, dude, this kid can sing. I remember. I remember going to. Uh, I think you went to Norwin. I remember going to uh, your high school talent show. Oh I'm yeah, sure you bro. won, right? The, you did the yeah. 75. Yeah, and it's like I like I only like that one song. I think it was like Sex or something. Yeah, and I, it's like the whitest thing for you know what I mean. Like, no, it's seriously, this shit is so white. But I was like, I still have it in a playlist today. I'm no way. Spot, and 1975 will come on. I don't think of 1975. I think of you. Oh, you know I appreciate I mean? that. Yeah, and when it comes on. I'm like, this is the most like hipster, hippie-ish, you know what I mean, <laughs> stuff ever. And I, I was like, this. It, I don't even think of you. I, I think, of, I think, of, I don't think of them. I think of you. I think of me sitting there with Nathaniel, Ethan. I think Beast right. came too. It was just those, those good old like, like medium, bad church boys because we were always like <laughs> into some Bro. like half bad stuff, but we were like in love with Jesus and. It was, it was a... It was I can't a even time. tell you how proud I am of you, bro. Like, it yeah. lights me up when, like, thinking that I'm even here with you for real yeah. and, like, seeing Yeah, we definitely go going forward because I can remember, like, all of us were just kind of hoodlums, you know what I mean? Horrible like, we were, people, bro. We were just, we were just kind of hoodlums, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we'd, because we, we'd go to the, the, these church events and we would, like, sneak out and just look for trouble and Bro, and, and always looking for trouble, dude. You'd be doing parkour and... <laughs> Who knows what niece would be up to? It's just seriously. We we're always up to something. But uh, now, who were you closest with growing up? Your dad or your mom? Probably my mom. Now, who are you closest with now? Still my mom, really. Still your mom. Okay. Yeah, I've said Steve. Like we just had like enough. Like we've had like a lot of tension in our relationship. Like my dad and I kind of. Yeah. Um, I think it's more or less the fact that I just like that no no ever offense or disrespect to him. Yeah. You know, but it's like. I just saw characteristics growing up that I didn't want to embody, and yeah. I saw my mom, like, needing more help than, yeah. you know, and then whenever they got divorced, we were real, like, so he lost his job whenever we were, like, in, about whenever I started playing guitar, actually, Yeah. and um, so that had, like, a big, a big uh, influence on me, like, our whole family just kind of started crumbling at that point, yeah. and, like, it was just a big depression circus at our house, and yeah. um, I, I think that, honestly... I don't even really go back there in my brain anymore. That's, like, part of, like, my yeah. big testimony, honestly, bro. I was so suicidal. It's, like, the hardest, hardest adversity. Like, mental health probably started there for oh, you. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. 15, 16. Yeah. And so I was, like, getting bullied like crazy in high school. Like, yeah. just seriously. Like, I'd wear, like, skinny jeans, bro, to high school. And, yeah, like, you were ahead of your time. People, so, and that's what I'm saying. That's what all creative people are, though. <laughs> It was, it was madness, bro. Like, you, yeah. you wouldn't believe in, I, I go back and like, I talk to people from my high school all the time and I'm like, was I like mean or like, w did everybody hate me? Like, I was like, I couldn't remember. They're like, Bobby, like literally everybody loved you in high school. Yeah. And I'm like, and then I just remember, like, it was literally a group of like five kids, bro. It's the biggest blessing I've had multiple of those kids come to me after high school, literally like sitting in my living room in like Pittsburgh, like crying, like apologizing to me Yeah, wow. and being like, bro, we treated you so horribly in high school. And you yeah. literally, I've had uh, other artists that like started singing and doing music, like come up to me and be like, Bobby, you literally like influenced me, like made me like think I could do music. Yeah. Like there's people in like my friend, my like really good friend in Florida. He, I met him at like a vape shop out there in like yeah. Tampa and he lives in Key West now and he literally learned how to play the uke. And then he was like, I'm going to learn how to sing. So then he started singing and like all along the way, he just keeps hitting me up. Bobby, you're the reason why I'm like doing this. Is like you can inspire me. Is it ukulele? Yeah. Now is that a mini guitar? Or yeah. It's like, like a four string, like nylon string, like, okay. ding, 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 like the Hawaiian. Is like, it like easier to learn in comparison to a guitar? A little easier to play whenever okay. it comes to like pressing down the yeah. frets and stuff. But like, it's such like a Florida, Hawaii, like beachy yeah. thing to play. I can see that. And so he started to play like ukulele and he was like, 
I'm going to start singing. He's like, what amp do I get? What mic do I get? Now he's going yeah. out busking and playing shows. He just played his first show the other day. Yeah. And I'm like, bro, I'm so proud of you. Like, to watch people be inspired by me with, again, like, I... I'm like known as like an artist like all around and I like yeah. just dropped my first single so to me it's like I guess artistry doesn't start like where you start like releasing your stuff but it yeah. definitely is I got into the shower about a year and a half ago and I was literally like washing my hair and I'm like I feel like an artist like yeah. I feel like I'm becoming an artist now and it was because and I think it, that that moment was because I started to realize that that's what I wanted to do full time, like main thing. Like once, as soon as that clicks in your head and you're like, I am going to be an artist. Like yeah. I am going to do this thing. Like there's no turning back and there's no plan B either. Yeah. Like I have so many plan Bs, bro. Like I've, I've just like made lists of plan B jobs and yeah. stuff that I could do. That would make me a good amount of money, you know, and yeah. adventures and you know, whatever I could do. And I was talking to, um, another artist and they're like there is like no plan b yeah. they're like you already know it yeah. you're like you're gonna be pursuing music until the day you die yeah and like i i want to do that but i want to be successful at it and i think like now's the time to push for it yeah so like that's been one of the biggest things is to um start to understand how the industry works but also as an independent person you know it, it requires like a lot of networking with businesses and like yeah. people who will invest into you too and um and like also making sure that you can like make that return yeah. also, which I'm confident in. And so it's like the manager portion of that is probably like the most important at this point for me is yeah. like having a manager because like as soon as I know that like what we could do and like what the steps are to take, you know, yeah. I could like actually like ask for investments, you know, and yeah. like feel like that. Chicago's the best place for it. I spend all my time around venture capitalists, founders, startups, and these are people that raise millions of dollars so like they just spend pretty much their their like years you know what i mean their first few years of building and designing a company or building and designing a pitch deck and, and whatever it might be in regard to a presentation to take to investors and it's completely in relation to what what you're speaking about because you know essentially the individual i was with today and he's a really dope dude maybe i'll connect you guys i don't know if it would lead to anything but he's real big into vc and uh mm -hmm. He did a TED Talk today, so I was down at his TED Talk at Wrigley Field, and he was talking about identity capital. And, you know, it's like people can invest into your identity. You know what I mean? I feel like there's a way where it's like, wow. you know, it's like, hey, look, I'm Bobby Taylor, and, you know, it's like I, it may not be a ring to my name right now, but, you know, here's, you know, you, you kind of pitch him and say, like, 20 years from now, I'm going to be the next Elvis Presley, or, you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? So it's That's like, interesting. just invest, invest 10 grand, or invest 15 grand, or invest 100,000 right now, and it's like, and then you promise them maybe 5%, you know, it's like something like that, 10%, whatever, of the, of the equity and correspondence with you as an individual. But it's an easy way where it's like, it, there's just, there's so many different ways where you can raise funds and, and do different things in, in like what you're saying. That is really interesting. And I'm not like, I wasn't really aware of it because I never, you know, a lot of people, the, the reason why I think of uh, like, honestly going the investor route is first of all, like, I want people who believe in me to be blessed, too, because yeah. I'm very confident in what I do. And, like, also, it's just, like, even with shows and stuff, you know, somebody booking me shows, I know for a fact it would, like, launch my stuff off, not even in a prideful way, but in a way that, like, I've just seen yeah. that happen everywhere that I've gone. Yeah, you nice. know, it's literally been for me just doing it myself. Like, even growing my Instagram just organically by, like, talking to people and individually networking with, like, every single one of my followers in person, yeah. you know, that's how I like grew it, you know, even to like where it was at now. Yeah. And it's like, it's interesting cause I like restarted my Instagram from the ground up. And so yeah. a lot of people from my childhood and everything don't even have my Instagram anymore. And I lost like a yeah. bunch, you know, so, you know, coming back to like where I am now and, and trying not to focus so much on social media, whereas like personal connection with everybody like I know that Ed Sheeran was talking like he's so huge and he's literally one guy that plays an acoustic guitar like yeah do you know how many one guys that play acoustic guitar there are in like the world I am like a one guy who plays like the acoustic guitar you know yeah but uh they said like how did you get to where you're at and he's like I've literally just been like kind to people like I've literally just genuinely been like a good person to yeah. like people and I'm like I've met so many like douchebag artists that like have, you know, they, they were like my pride, like my, 
gift like my yeah. my and like clench it with this tight fist because it's theirs you yeah. know they're not gonna like share their you know passion or their like energy with anybody else they want everybody else's so that they can like bundle that into their gift and be like oh i'm like grabbing all this stuff and like look how big my energy ball is you yeah. know and um I'm, like, not about that. I'm, like, I literally want to be this, like, giant light bulb for everybody to, like, just, like, eat off of, you know. But yeah. I have to, you know, get nourished somewhere, you know. And that's yeah. why, like, Jesus has been really big for me. I, I want to influence, you know, artists. You know, I want to get to a place where I'm being in rooms with bigger artists so that I can actually, like, just share yeah. Jesus with them yeah. genuinely. Like, that's that's been my my whole entire MO doing music in general, yeah. like wanting to do anything else with it. Yeah. And, um, and that's like, so Abby and I are, um, we, there's like a couple, there's like grants going on in, uh, Livingston County and stuff. And just in the midst of that, we were just given an opportunity to perhaps present a business plan to the government in yeah. Livingston County for grants and like uh, low interest loans, stuff like that. And, um, we're thinking of running a venue that's like almost a marketplace, but a very co-op based marketplace. Yeah. Um, all within Livingston County. So anything that we outsource as much as we can outsourcing to like Livingston County. So like dishes, we get like ceramic from a local ceramic person, you know, yeah. uh, coffee beans, we're getting them for, like rotating them out from like the different ones, like giving everybody a shot, you know, having clothing stands that um, you know, we both are selling our clothing. She's into sustainable textiles. And so she's about to start weaving with like, um, like used t-shirts yeah. and like creating like beautiful fabric out of that. Yeah. Um, and so we're, we're doing all of this and pushing our art ventures. And so as I'm doing music, I'm like, I could seriously just like be pushing both of these simultaneously because if I'm making money over here, like I just need enough to eat genuinely. Yeah. Like that's, I'm happy just being stable. Like it's, yeah. it's not like the big stuff for me, you know, cause one day if I am, you know, already stable off of music, I'm going to have way more than just yeah. like bread on the table, you know? Yeah. Um, because I'm passionate about it <clears throat> and it's like, but also just giving it, that something snapped in my brain. It was like, did, did that happen with you whenever you started to like do the stuff with Simon originally? Yeah. Yeah. I think. I think it, we were probably pretty similar. You know what I mean? I think, you know, being, being in situations, especially where you're, you're kind of broke, where that desperation has just been in for so long, you're so desperate, you're willing to do whatever. So I think it was just, a, it was pretty much just a combination of me being so desperate and being met with an opportunity hmm. like, like this. And then I just capitalized on, on just a, a combination of those emotions of desperation and humility and and then applying that that extreme desperation to an opportunity and kind of treating it like that that like an song like lose yourself you know what i mean so i just went all in and kind of lost myself in, in the midst of of the opportunity and you know five years later here we are that is so cool yeah I, because the you're watching you grow so much has been so inspiring to me yeah you know just to watch like how much people can change, you know, and yeah, how, facts. you know, getting somebody into a groove and like even Simon pouring his energy into you and like yeah. mentoring people because even as I've like small mentored people, you know, yeah. like and watch them like grow and like at least make like positive changes in their life, yeah, you yeah. know, it, there's been people that I've hung out with that have made me make increasingly worse choices in my life, yeah. you know, yeah, you know, and, and I'm sure that we both have that same experience, yes. yeah. but, <laughs> um, you know, it's just gotten like more and it, it's gotten more and more, it's gotten easier yeah, yeah. <laughs> to, to just make the better de decisions and just allow it yeah. to be like myself doing it. Um, but genuinely like being in high school, being like severely depressed the whole way through, you yeah, know, I my whole to talk family. On that. So like yeah. overcoming my, so I, I, I believe, and I'm, I'm going to probably make a, make a video. I want to, I've been thinking on this cause I really want to try to help people one that I want to bring more light to it you know it, it's hard to really help per se you know what I mean there's not an mm -hmm. there's not really I don't like the the idea or the route of like a, a medicinal solution you know I'm not a big advocate of like you know take these pills or do this or do that more so of like making I, I think it's more of an acceptance you know what I mean I think the I think the first solution for healing people's mental health and I think the gap really right now is it's a bigger gap it's expanding I believe in correspondence with the recession and just the economy and and how things be continue to become less and less affordable because we have this expectation culture where 
you know, at a young age, 16, 17, 18, you, you, you start to expect from yourself to immediately have it all together. You know what I mean? And it's like, you don't have it all together and you're 19 or you're 17, you're 18, you're 19, you're 20, or you're 25, you know yeah. what I mean? And you gotta move back in with your parents or something like that. Yeah. And, and then you see somebody on Instagram with a Lamborghini and they're 13 years old and you know, they've got 14 That's Lamborghinis and you're like, Oh my God, somebody like all these kids have it together. And I'm the only, only one that's out here with nothing going on in my life. And you know, I'm broke and I look like a loser. I'm never going to figure it out. I should just, I should just kill myself. I should just end my life. And I, I and it, I see this gap to continue to expand. It's directly in correlation with this, this, just this inflation bubble, just this lack of affordability bubble, because it, it's a combination of things aren't affordable now in correspondence with the degrees that are available. So it's like, I don't beat college up. Mm -hmm. You know, I think people should go and do what they want to do. You know what I mean? People that Generally. love teaching, go get a degree and be a teacher. You know what I mean? People that, you know, love the medical field, go get a degree and, and be a doctor. But just know, the way this world is structured right now, that degree is going to cost you $50,000, $100,000, $200,000, whatever it might be. And then you're not even guaranteed a job. And then in addition to that, if you do get a job, you're not guaranteed to make enough to survive. You know, and, and so you get this job, you did all this, and then you get out just, it's like you did all this and the, and the, and the girl you wanted said she'd give you a shot, and then <laughs> you did it all, and, the, and she doesn't give you a shot, and she's banging your best friend, and it's like, swear, oh my God, I'm going to I'm gonna end myself, you know what I mean? You said I would do all this, and we, I would be with you, and I would get you, and it's like, and I, it's like starting even younger, because it's, it's like, we have access to social media, so like, you're 14, 15 now, and you're, and you're seeing somebody who else is 14 on Twitch, and, and they made like $14 billion, and you know what I mean? They have like 14 wives and 14 Lamborghinis, it's and it's like, what's going on? And then and then you're even older, too. You're 28, 29, 30. You just got a master's degree or, or maybe even a, a doctorate degree, and you're like, dude, my life is over. I'm still living with my parents. I'm almost 30 years old. I don't have it together. You know what I mean? And it's like, it's all right. You know, it's like Colonel Sanders was like, 90,000 years old when the AFC <laughs> was established. And, and that was, what, 20, 30, 40 years ago. And so it's like, I don't think people realize, like, when our parents were affording to live on their own, it was $1,000 a month. You know what I mean? And, and it wasn't like wages were 10 times uh, less as well. It's like wages were a little closer to what they are now because income doesn't directly go up like the expense of life. It's, it's very, very simple. You know what I mean? When you break okay. down the equation of, like, inflation and then income in direct correspondence to inflation it's like they don't necessarily correlate they don't keep up with one another and that's why the poverty gap just continues to expand so it's like but with that mental health i think the first step is just like it, it's all right you know what i mean you're, you're gonna be all right to just keep pushing keep fighting but what helped what helped you you yeah. know overcome thanks for, that thanks for directing it this way for real that was yeah real this is this is something that's been on my heart a lot honestly is like Watching even myself, you know, I've had to pull back from even using social media a ton. Yeah. Because there's there's a place where I think that our attention's being pulled purposely, and it's creating. Um, I think it's just creating a a really horrible mental health and yeah, like stigma for the entire like U.S. and world, like like people all over the world now have cell phones yep. and they're watching TikToks. Like I'm like talking about like people in Africa, or, like Third world country, yeah. Like seeing people in like Lamborghinis, like living in these like marble palaces yep. and like, I'm so happy for you, you know, that in like definitely like, but some of these, these are like rented houses and rented Lamborghinis oh, that they're rented. dropping their life savings on yeah, it's to, to show this, to, you know, to show off this lifestyle. But yeah. like, people like you that are like grinding your ass off to yeah. do like what you like to, to gain, yeah. you know, income and like to, you're helping your mom, you're yeah. helping your sister. You're I like, know how hard it is too. So it's like, I know like realistically these people, it's probably like 1%, you know what I mean? Cause I, I know what, what I've pulled in over the last five years mm -hmm. and I've put it all back in the business. I live right here on that couch. You know what I mean? And it's like, <laughs> I know how hard it is. You know what I mean? It's like, I know how much I, I, I bring in and it's a, it's a decent amount. And I'm like, there ain't no way these 14 year olds, you know what I mean? Have, it's, but it's all right. And you know, it's like, I, I just respect transparency. I respect the honesty. For sure. The first thing that I had to come to terms with, and, and this is like one of the biggest things that I think that, um, God provides like an umbrella from yeah. is like to be humble. Yes. If you stay humble, you like, 
don't look at this person or that person and be like, I want that because it's like, this will make it, this will only make it harder for me to be humble. You know, like, yeah. am I even ready for that? Like to be really honest with yourself, like I can't even keep the trash off the floor of like my 98 minivan, you know, yeah. like let alone drive a Porsche to work, you know, like yeah. I have that thing totaled in like two weeks. Yeah. Tops. <laughs> like, yeah. N- but like nobody understands that like the responsibility of like, owning all these cars yeah and you, like are you even going to be able to pay your taxes do you even know how to file a 1099 like yeah. it, seriously like i'm i you in the more things that you add to your life i've just seen people in like jupiter florida and it's like the more that they had they still had the same problems and life problems you know so yeah. i'm depressed in my you know forty six thousand dollar house you know living with my parents you know yeah. and whenever i'm 16 i'm seeing a guy like a 16 year old on like a Ducati, you know, and like yeah. ripping down at, like LA, you yeah. know, like, yeah, I'm like, how do I attain this? And then all of your direction goes straight to money instead of what you're passionate about. And I think the people who are going to college now for like, say teaching or whatever, yeah. that's not even like a viable source of income at this point. It's, it, but to teach the youth, you know, like, why is that direction being diverted You know, or like, why are they not being like compensated fairly, you know, for what they're doing? And like, I think most of the people that I've seen that go to what their degrees are for have been nurses. Yes. Genuinely. Like I, I know people with psych degrees that are like working for Facebook now because they're not even looking for people with tech degrees because there's so many people with tech degrees now, you know? So everybody's like bringing in all these different degrees from everywhere and nobody's even working in their field that they were even originally passionate about. Yeah. People are changing their degrees, adding another $10,000 onto their you know, tuition so that they can like go back and like finish out their school for like what they needed to. Yeah. And I'm, but it's like definitely the viewpoint of like watching everybody else, like living these crazy Instagram lives. And like, I find myself guilty of it too. You know, you're on like a rooftop bar in Chicago and you're like, you know, like I like think of, you know, anybody who's like watching that, like they don't know that I'm like biting my nails at the bill. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, I'm, I'm working, you know, like, but also I'm like pursuing a dream of like doing art. And it's like, I don't want to get it through like lying and not being transparent, yeah. you know, because that's how like everybody's trying to get money right now. TikTok is just like the biggest. Yeah. That's where I'm putting the biggest my money and time is TikTok. And, and it's like watching so many TikToks and like seeing how people are like, even art and music is being like really uh, diluted yeah. through TikTok because it's like there's so much coming in there and like you can get popular because somebody watched your like 15 second clip, you know, people are getting like 98 million views on just awful songs. Yeah. Just like trash music. Yeah. And I'm like, how are you? And it's not even like just from my perspective, it's like they're listening to it because it's trash music. Yeah. And they're like making so much money. It's literally free money at this point, like going on TikTok and doing that. But the thing is it's going to cause like a, collapse of like the art community because it's now starving out you know the artists that are like talented artists you know people who are genuinely serious about music and those people are probably serious about music too yeah you know but um i think that art is to like lift people up and to like spread light and like i think everything is just like turning our brains to like mush yeah like it's just like mindless everything like seriously and we're we're so catered to what we even want to hear on our tiktoks and stuff absolutely. you know you're never even going to get a different world view or absolutely anything unless you're like talking to people reading books you know like yeah. reading about history and like seeing how like whole civilizations have collapsed you know absolutely. like but i really have been praying that there's like a renaissance of art you know like genuine art you know yeah. like ai art is just like terrifies me you know yeah. like it, because they're, it's going to be, they like write songs already, you know, like it writes music and like, that's really cool to help people get inspired. But like, I go to bed and I hear like melodies, yeah. you know, that haven't been written, you know, like I fall asleep, like yeah, hearing melodies, like nice that's my me. AI, bro. Like I can't, I couldn't even begin to think of like, I always think of like, how do like new rhythms and things get created? Cause like, I can barely even get Twinkle Twinkle like little star to like, <laughs> play right in my head and I'm like how the heck do these guys like come up with it? I'm like that doesn't make it it's like kind of when I think of like how to create music like creating your own melody and stuff like that I'm like for me it would be like me trying to create my own color yeah like I doesn't I can't, my mind doesn't work that way where I'm like that's and it's it's it it almost for me is like a like a goosebump type of 
type of feeling when I, when I start to think of like how powerful music is and why and, and where I spend a majority of my relationship with Christ is worship you know what mm -hmm, I mean and mm -hmm. it's like and I, I think biblically it's like it's biblical it's like one you always you always hear any 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 teacher when it comes to religious or spirituality always reference how was it was it not Satan that was technically originally like the leader of yeah. leader of worship yeah, you know yeah. what I mean but then to take it even further and, and to take it away from, from the, the sat satanic side of it and lead more back into Christ of mm -hmm. really just the, the one uh, biblical verse of Christ inhabiting the praises of his people. You know what I mean? It always says yes. the Lord will inhabit. The and that's like for me, that's like been my go-to of like where I experience Jesus the most is, is actually in. I know our lives are to be pretty much a, a worshiping state towards yeah. towards Christ. But for me, it's always been like really just starting on a worship song and like like falling falling in love. Yeah, you know, more so with 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 Jesus, and I'm not perfect. You know, I swear, things like that. Yeah. But but that's that's for me. That's like my number one go to. You know, that's why like for me, I love, I love listening to good. Like I don't even like I don't even hear lyrics. Like I hear like when I when I listen to music, I hear like everything behind that. You know what I mean? I'm like, yeah. I like that like old old school like rhythmy. You know what I mean? Like black lady singing or something. While we're like on that. this, let me play you this song. It's gonna be the next song that yes. I release. And what's the name of this song? This is called uh, Kinda a Problem. And uh, this was just kind of the main lyric in it. Is this your favorite song right now? This is this is the my next one that I'm gonna release. Yeah. So it's it's definitely one of my favorites that I've written for sure, just for the what message was, of it. What's your most proud moment before you start the song? Like up to to date in your life. What are you most proud of? Genuinely like finally going forward with like the release of my single like genuinely yeah. like you it doesn't like you you don't think like going online and like releasing a song like yeah. is that serious but How whenever you're seeing you seeing your name and everything on spotify it's so dope and i've released music before like yeah. i've released like my close for comfort project yeah. like my electronic stuff and it like wasn't that good yeah but like I wasn't really worried about it because I wasn't serious about it. And I've been yeah. telling everybody, like, whenever I do release this, this is, it's going to be, like, go time yeah. for, like, Bobby Taylor music. Like, I'm like, this is my project. This is my, like, yeah. this is my shot. You yeah, know, yeah. like, and um, releasing that song felt like I was finally doing what I've said I was going to do for so long. And, yeah. And it felt so right. Like, dude, like, I just felt, like, euphoric because it was, like, finally like making forward motion into like where I want to be and yeah. that like changed everything because I mean it, even up to weeks ago like between whenever we rescheduled this yeah. till now I've changed even more into like I'm literally gonna say like screw it and just start going and busking and like I need I need a van basically to like go and travel yeah I'll and um and then and then just start to play music everywhere yeah. and start to organically get my name out in different places because I mean TikTok's so oversaturated and I mean I'll be able to like do it you yeah. know and I'll be able to be using those and utilizing that stuff and as more people start to hit up my links and stuff it's gonna yeah. grow it um but genuinely to you know gr create fan bases in different cities uh, like one at a time yeah and like be in cincinnati be in cleveland be in chicago have shows lined up you know yeah fine. first night you know go out on like a thursday you know and um you know get a bunch of people like spending like two weeks at a time in a place yeah. and just being like meeting people being like hey my show you know just organically creating yeah, friends you know yeah. and because i know some people that just literally are so wrapped up in themselves that they couldn't even see themselves outside of a vip spot at a club you know yeah. where it was like I mean, I don't even want to be at the club anymore, but, like, that's the only place where they'd meet people. And that was yeah. an issue for me in Pittsburgh is, like, I just wanted to have a creative community of, like, creatives that supported each other. Yeah. Supported it. <laughs> supported each other, you know, and um, we're able to be sober together. Yeah. And I swear, bro, I spent, like, a year trying to do it. Like, getting people out of the clubs and, like, into, like, a pavilion. Yeah. And, like, have a barbecue and, like hang out, like have a couple of beers and like make some music yeah, and yeah. like, like network between them. But like every networking event for creatives in Pittsburgh, even like, uh, like fashion based stuff and everything, it's always just a like blackout party, like yeah. every single time. And I'm like, I'm so tired of this because I was, why I was partying so much is yeah. I was in the art community. Like I was with my favorite artists, you know, except yeah. for we were always blacked out, you know? 
and like there was just no off switch like it yeah. just keeps going like I know people that have been there for like 10 years now yeah, trying yeah. to release music and like doing their thing you know yeah. and like made no progress forward like yeah and and so it like terrified me yeah, yeah. genuinely but I wrote this um, this song <laughs> And it's called mm -hmm. Kinda a Problem, and um, it'll be my next release on Bobby Taylor Music. Um, this was, uh, oh boy. It was uh, about a relationship that I just realized that, like, it turned me around a lot. Like, I was like, I think that I really need to, like, love myself before I, like, start to try to, like, love people again the yeah. way that, like, they really deserve to be loved because. Yeah. I, I, like, loved everybody that I ever, like, dated or had, like, a fling with or anything. Like, yeah. genuinely, like, cared about them. Like, I didn't, like, put myself out there, like, in a weird way. But, like, I really did, like, love every person I did yeah. uh, have a relationship with. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and I still do. Like, that's, like, the craziest thing. Is, but it's also not, like, this, like, romantic love. Like, well, I'm still so in love with them. Yeah. It's, like, I'm, I'm like... I, I still, like, love those people, like, yeah. just genuinely would, like, die for them still, you know, yeah. like, they call me up, yo, I'm dying, I'm on my way, yeah. seriously, and, um, and it doesn't, like, and, and thankfully, I've, I've just, like, been able to even, like, reconcile some of them, you know, and yeah. just, like, been okay, you know, and just know, like, all right, they're okay, you know, yeah, yeah. and then I'm, like, I'm fine, you know, yeah. <laughs> but... Thought I saw you yesterday, why'd you hide from me? I know that it'd be tragic if I forgot to breathe So I went to your apartment Danced in the rain Wait until your lights come up I'm back in your brain It's kind of a problem Don't know what to do When I'm feeling lonely I go anywhere with you And it's kind of relaxing With somebody else, can feel the same way too. Is it the last one, or is it something else? Am I close to healing? Am I slowly being killed, being brain dead, tripping over you? Is something else? If I thought that this was real, then I should really love myself. I wish because I know from listening to uh, Rogan when he has people perform and it's like 
the live performance, like it's just goosebumps, and I just, I can't, uh, I can't, can't even talk, but I can't help but like sit here and think like it's like just a guy given talent, bro. And just like when we were kids, I was like, what the heck? You know what I mean? Like everybody wants to have that talent. You know what I mean? You can see it. <laughs> there's two ways to like, you know, re really. You know, secure that that good-looking girl. It's like make her laugh or be the <laughs> singer. You know what I mean? It's like, dog. It's it's uh it's incredible. You know what I mean to sit here and experience Thank experience you, this, dude. Are you? Or how long are you in Chicago? I'm gonna stay here till like probably tomorrow night. For real? Yeah. I think I'm having. A, if you stay longer, I think I'm having a career night. Uh, Monday, I believe the eighth is Monday the eighth. Um, yeah, it's safe. Yeah, if you're, if you're here, have you come in and just, like, perform for the office, you know what I mean? So That would be really uh, dope. Throw you a couple hundred bucks, you're easy, easy bread. And for easy sure. Easy exposure if, if you, if you stick around, I don't know, so. I just, might, I might some, have to do that. Yeah, just, just some, uh, just some, just some opportunity. Um, that was fire, I can't, I'm still, like, at a loss for words, I kind of, like, want to hear another song. Do you want me to do another song? I kind of low-key, like, need it. Okay, alright, alright. I, like, need it, it, like, felt good for my soul. <laughs> I don't know what it is about good music, dude. But it's like medicine. Isn't that fire? Yeah. Fire. I like to my cape. I like totally bent my. The only bad thing about like when you get around someone talented with music, like you start thinking about like trying to sing too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, like, don't fucking start singing. Bro, oh, you're fine. <laughs> what is that duck in the background? <laughs> I am sure you know that. Alright, this is Pollen. This is my yes. this is my new single. I Pollen. have the one on my phone. I'll play it for people. I'm like, this the one you sent me. Pollen. I don't know if it's what well, Aiden, did you download that stuff yet? Yeah. The the one, I don't know, you it's you get you get kinda of loud and it's pretty good. I might be it. I've I I like sent, <laughs> probably sent like yeah. I can't even remember. I sent so many songs out like It's fire, I play it. Thank you, bro. Yeah. It was oh, oh, that was probably um Why Are You Still Waiting? You got one Yeah, I think it was that one. Oh man. I do, do Paul. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Precious little lily in your flower dress Get too close to now my nose The pollen goes no off of bed Oh, you're messing me up, yeah, I'm messing me up Regardless, we ain't going nowhere, so we're definitely, I, I can like, all I can think of is just sharing this blessing with, with my people, it's, if they'll, uh, <laughs> they'll have you, so, I which I know they will. So, I, I want to transition into the future vision, you know, 5, 10, 15 years from now, which we've kind of already talked on, but like, yeah. you have a place you want to settle down, like a state, or you just kind of, 
Yeah, actually, like, Abby and I just pretty much decided recently just being up in Rochester for, like, the past, like... That small town. Mm-hmm. Like, going to Livingston County and, like, it's a relatively vast like county. Amish? Uh-uh. Okay. No, like, these people are, like, really cool people, like, New Yorkers, like, yeah. kind of, like, out in the country. Yeah. And, like, it's... I love New York's vibe, bro. Like, coming to Chicago... So like strong liberals. Like, a, a, a mixture. Honestly, bro, it's, like... It's like such a good balance out there. Genuinely, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like it's like it's not too bad. Like I mean, it's not like it's it's not so conservative that there's no forward motion. Yeah, and it's and, but it's like a country place. Yeah, yeah. And then even whenever you go up to Rochester, like everybody's that's still like some farm. Like those are a lot of like farmer kids yeah. and stuff like that up there. So you have like arty people got, like, who are mix. like it's a good mix and like. A balance of just like love for people yeah, and like that's all that matters. You know, genuinely, they were some of the sweetest people I've that's ever met in a city. Yeah, for real. Like even in in like even whenever you go to the bars with all the artists, yeah, like nobody's getting faded. Honestly, like right. there were some people that were yeah, faded yeah, yeah. there. You know, but you got like your college kids and stuff. But like yeah. the artists that just hang out were just like chilling and they made chill spots. You yeah. know, like I, it's not like going to the club and stuff. You know, yeah, it was just like. This girl's like spinning like Michael Jackson on vinyls yeah. in the front of it, and I was like, man, I feel like I'm at home right now. Yeah. Like, just being like around that that group, like just like doing some like stupid like white people disco dance yeah. and stuff. Like, I was like, this is this feels really homey, and that was up in Rochester. But then I did a show in Livingston County, and like we had people from that we met over the course of the weeks. Like, yeah. had like 15 people show up to the show and like yeah, yeah. get to. Um, you know, hear me sing, and I was like, how did I even bring in 15 people from here, for me being here for, like, a week and a half, maybe, Yeah, yeah. to, like, a random open night at some saloon, yeah. you know, it was, it was really, really wild, and, but that's what, like, sparked that in me, that, like, I'm like, oh, I could totally do this, so, yeah. um, the vision is basically, um, being in Pittsburgh for now, and I think I'm gonna start touring now, Yeah. while I'm in Pittsburgh, and I don't have any overhead, really, yeah, do it. um, and then see what I can do, like getting my motion forward doing that. Yeah. And then um uh back it out to um kinda like back in whenever the time's right, we wanna push for this business too. It it's yeah. like it's gonna be big. I'm like really sure of it. Yeah. It's gonna basically be like an art gallery. Yeah. And so run this like gallery space honestly and then in Livingston County, um and probably live out there. Yeah. Um and try to, you know, bring people there and then work from there with my music. Is there, like, a a stage that you foresee yourself really wanting, like, a like a milestone stage or arena you want to perform in? Like, dude, the, the, st the, the vision for the music, like, a milestone stage would be, like, any large stage yeah, you know like yeah more or less it's like i want people to move at my shows i want to you know be practiced enough and honed enough in my craft that i'm like watching people move and i'm starting to see that at yeah. my little gigs and that was the first gig i did in like almost two years and like re like hopping back into that i was like this has got to be god guiding me back into here because yeah i haven't done this in forever so um, the, the vision really is to be stable and making income and making returns yeah. for the people that like pushed into me. Yeah. Um, because I, I seriously just have like a blessing list. Like as soon as I start earning just to bless people, yeah. bro, like that, that have helped me along the way, like where I've been, you know, nearly homeless and like people have like helped me or people yeah. have given me like cars or so you know just yeah, so i've always been taken care of and i'm like i want to push blessings so far yeah. that's literally my my milestone is yeah. like starting to be able to bless people to like a degree where it's like yeah. it affects them you know yeah um you know it always blesses me if somebody gives me like five dollars but if somebody you know walks yeah. up to your house and like you know fixes something that you really need like say you have like a leaky pipe and it's yeah. been leaking for like years you know yeah. You, it makes a bigger difference, you know, like, but being able to bless people, you know, monetarily, like where people are struggling and help yeah. my parents genuinely, like, I want my dad to keep the house, you know, yeah. and yeah. I want to, I want my mom to have a nice place to live, you know, yeah. those are like milestones for me as being able to be 
free enough for myself and honestly just touring in general yeah you know so i'm gonna just make that milestone happen yeah. you know myself yeah. you know and do yeah. that but yeah it i mean it it just basically comes on I, I really just want to be where god puts me yeah genuinely and i do have big dreams i'm not like trying to be like a small indie artist for yeah. my whole life i do want to be a big artist you know yeah, yeah. don't get me wrong um and i do want to you know make money like yeah. good money from my music and whatever that looks like you know um it money to me again is like i was like homeless so yeah. like but i was so happy bro there was so little the the lack of i was still working and everything like out of my car and i was just enjoying it it was yeah. uncomfortable because i just wasn't prepared to do that but like yeah i wasn't in a hurry to like get out of it and it yeah. was really strange because i was like how am I so comfortable being like homeless right now? And I like reassess and I'm like, honestly, the more stuff you have, the more complication to your life. Like you have the boat, you have the car, you have um, your sports car, you have yeah. your wife's car, you have the house, but the roof's leaking. The engine is filled with oil in your boat. Your sports car is about to go over the miles and it's losing value, you yeah. know, while sitting in your garage. What yeah. am I going to do with that? It's costing me so much money in insurance, yeah, yeah. you know, like my beamer, you know, it's like killing me on the, you know, gas prices, yeah. whatever you're doing. And it's like, there's always just more stress. So like the, the more that I've watched people go up, they add stress to their life with that money. Yeah. And I'm like, to have like different, to just have different things. And I'm like, so it's the things and it's the pride, you know, where I was like, it, it's just like to show off what I had. I, I love to have stuff, you know, yeah. I love to have nice things, but it was more or less whenever I was watching people get rich, yeah, I watched them just stack more stuff into the mix and it just created, if they would have stayed in the place where they were at, you know, like stayed at this house, you know, yeah. like granted for just a little bit longer, you know, yes. this is yours outright, you know, yes. and, um, you, to not be in such so a key. hurry to, um, just like present yourself like, ah, oh, fuck you guys. I made it. You know, yeah. like seriously, I, I, I get so overwhelmed with like the, the speed of like people like needing yeah. to hurry up and show off what they got in like, yeah. Hell yeah. Like if you have some money, like, yeah. like buy yourself a nice pair of shoes, you know, yeah, like yeah. dude, dude, like get, like treat yourself. Like yeah. working without reward is like torture. It's yeah, like, yeah. I mean, it's, it's worthless, you know? Yeah. So there's like a very good balance of like spending and saving and like having the things that, you know, are worth your time. And, uh, you're, you're seeing the reflection of that in your quality of life, Yeah. you know, but you could literally live in like a, a small house and fill it with really nice things and have yes. a way lower house payment. And also you don't have to hire three cleaning ladies, yes. you know? Yes. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. it's, it's just been interesting to me just watching what people value and where they put their, you know, their money's value too, because yeah. also, uh, the, the long story is owning the businesses yeah. and having a clothing brand. Um, Abby and I both have the, the clothing designs and yeah. stuff like that. That's something that we're pushing for like actively right now. Yeah. Um, the other one is to have a nonprofit, um, helping people that need food, yep. um, grow, starting community gardens. I was going to, yeah. I was the, one of the things that I was going to do is work that electric job and save up for like six months and then try to buy a sprinter or something like that and yeah. turn it into a camper and then do this nonprofit yeah. on the back end of it and, uh, start to build community gardens for people and probably use high schools or colleges to maintain those gardens. Mm -hmm. Um, so that there's like ample food for like communities. Yeah. And also if like people signed up, you know, we'd build a garden in their backyard or like a small greenhouse if they have the space, yeah. you know, but have all of it funded through like governments and like food service programs because the quality of food that I'm seeing coming out of like even food bank stuff, like, because I grew up on a food banks, bro. I'm, I literally would just got like oh my, my God. me too, bro. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I ate that brick of cheese, the brick of cheese, bro. In the white. White rectangular box. Um, <laughs> brick cheese, bro. Brick cheese. And, and for the audience watching, I know I look lethargic and I'm yawning. But I just stuffed nose. I've been up since four, so it's an, I'm not bored. I'm exhausted. So uh, I want to talk about stuff I like, but I want to see if you like it and what you like about it. So what's your favorite food? Because I love food. 
you have a favorite restaurant, you have a favorite dish, has a food ever like been like a holy experience? Because I've had like glorious experiences. Oh my man. So it's like, I feel like you're the same because like you grow up so like broke where you like fall in love with food. Like like probably like I one of our top food, priorities bro. is food. It's, it's it like is, as long as I spend so same, much money like, on food. Bro. Yeah, it's like it's, as long as I can eat, I'm I'm cool. They're like that's broke boy shit. I'm like yeah, I I'll, I can go I'll back down a broke boy. I'll keep eating. Eat. Because I, I'm like, if I can eat good, like seriously, like yeah, you're, if I can eat, I'm rich. You just, you literally just posted this this morning. I was like, man, if that doesn't ring true, you were, uh, you were saying like, it, it makes such like a big difference. Like it doesn't matter how bad it gets once you start succeeding because you've had it bought five billion times worse. Yes, bro. doesn't like, matter. It, it's mattered not anything yeah, to me because I'm like literally homeless, but I was living in Florida. You know, and I could like. And you drive remember to the... falling in love with those horrible times. So it's like if you found a way to find peace and find joy at rock bottom, at the new levels that you've now you know achieved, and there's lows in those levels, they are like ten time, million time, thousand times better than those <laughs> rock bottom times. So it's like, oh, okay, awesome. I just lost all this money. So what? It's not like. When I was growing up and those food bank lines or the water was off in our house or the lights were off or we have literally, we, we didn't celebrate Christmas like after I was like 15 <laughs> or 16. It was like blankets and books. That was like, like our Christmas was like, just like, like I knew I was going to get like socks and a blanket, you know? So I was like, I didn't even have it that bad. And it was like, yeah. it, and it, I mean, but it was still like I would look at like my friends. And I was, stuff, I was so poor. Like the church would make fun of me for being poor. I remember, <laughs> I remember going to church and like, ah, oh, these kids who make fun of me for being like not having enough. But but it was it was good. I, the people that made me feel like at home was just you, Nathaniel, Ethan, niece. You know what I mean. So it's like. You guys are always my... Everybody else, I was like, dang, dude. Bro, I tell everybody about you. Bro. you you, 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 here. you, Nathaniel, Ethan, Brandon, like, I call you guys, like, my best friends ever. For yeah. Real. It, like, just never ended. Like, once you have people tight like you that... I always like, pick back real. up. I'm trying to get Nathaniel to bring his lazy ass out here, dude. Don't <laughs> drive out here, bro. <laughs> tell him to get out. But, uh... So, movie. Do you have a favorite movie or are you a TV show guy? Uh, or neither. Some people I'm really a, can't sit down and watch Honestly, TV. bro, Twin Peaks was, like hit hard it was really so good like yeah, David show? Lynch. yeah it's a tv show old old ass tv show yeah and it was like seriously one of my favorite things i've watched yeah movies i watch like indie flicks of course you yeah, know like yeah. there's a movie called comet um okay. it was like a kind of like a weird like parallel universe type of okay. but it was, everything was just like slightly odd yeah like that's the best way to describe it is the whole movie is just slightly odd like yeah. everything's just kind of awkward yeah, yeah and you just kind of sit there like the whole time yeah and it's just a coming of age like romance film almost interesting Any major no notifications over there for my phone uh, i don't think so no and we got those videos up yeah dope on both both tiktoks yep all right cool favorite food Favorite food would probably have to be, like, something that I get all the time, you know, like, I love trying New York-style pizza. Yeah. Like, because I was a man, at, like, a GM at a pizzeria yeah. in White Oak, and it was, like, the top, like, the best pizza what was it called? I've ever eaten. Rockaway. Uh, Rockaway Pizza. I had a pizza in, like, Irwin, I think, called Vocelli's. Vocelli's. I really liked that pizza. Vocelli's is good pizza. Yeah. They, they make, at least make their dough. Yeah. Like, it's it's good dough. Did for I real. ever bring you, did I ever take you Joyo's in Greensburg? Oh, I freaking love Joyo's, yeah, it's, bro. It's, it's easy. They're, like, white pizzas. Yeah. Like, it's an easy go -to. Oh, man. Yeah. Dude, that stuff was good. Yeah, so pizza's, like, honestly a really big, I try pizza everywhere I go. I try. Have you had Deep Dish yet? No. Get Giordano's. That's what every we're literally yeah. in Lincoln Park, bro. Yeah, get your donuts. We were we were literally about to go there. I think yeah. that that might be on the list tomorrow. Yeah, but, get your donuts. Um, we were so pizza's big deal, and then um, honestly, I love hot dogs. Yeah, like I have, I hot like I have dogs. an affinity for hot dogs. Yeah. like it's like such a cheap ass food. But I like, haven't had a good Chicago dog, but ever since I read the stat that like every hot dog takes seven days off of your life. <laughs> Statistically. I'm gonna eat like four more today. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I like take it because I love hot dogs too. I'm like I grew up broke as shit. You know, that's all I ate was I ate hot dogs and mac and cheese was my luxury Seriously. meal. Seriously, just cut the hot dogs up. Throw you can throw it in anything. You can throw hot dogs in. You know what I mean? <laughs> you have hot dogs and cake when you grow up. You know what I mean? It's like it don't matter. I have the glizzies and anything. Dumbest favorite foods, but um, no, genu genuinely like I love trying like good 
just any authentic tacos, like taco stands, yeah. like finding like the real deal taco stuff, like Love being tacos. in Florida, yeah, being in Dallas. I came to see you. We were talking about it, me and Aiden, it's called Velvet Taco. If you're down in the city, yep. Velvet Taco, go there, it's fire. Absolute fire. Was it good? Fire, and they have, me and Aiden, we're talking about it, red velvet cake. It was fire. I got it. I was like, I don't put, I don't put too many desserts on my story just in case somebody sent it to my nutritionist because I, I have nutritionist <laughs> and uh, yeah, he would be. I have a block for my story, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'm pretty good for the most part. Um, what you have a favorite book? Man, I like. That's like one of the biggest things is I've like stopped reading like yeah. since like the end of high school. Has any book ever impacted you? Like man, like even a piece or an article or a quote. Where it's like, man, that really like changed my life. Hmm. I like really stick to the scripture. Yeah. Like genuinely. Which favorite verse? I, I got a tattoo on my ankle of like just a little sunrise and like a little heart. And uh, it was, I was sitting in a parking lot, like just thinking, and it was uh, the love and mercy of the Lord never ceases. It's as fresh as the morning and it's as faithful as the sunrise. Yeah. And it's like, I just have realized like however many times, like I go to bed feeling like the worst person in the world, you know? Yeah. Sometimes you just can't even like cleanse your soul that night. You know, yeah. you just feel that shitty. Yeah. You know, and I, I just remember like waking up in the morning just feeling like, God, I like, thank you for another day. Like What's that like Chris Thompson song? Like, your love never fails. Bro. You remember that? From yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I your would love think it never fails. Yeah. It, it, it seriously has been... Because, I mean, I seriously gave up, you know, yeah. with with God in general yeah. for like a, a while. Yeah, because yeah. I was just so hurt from like Florida and like yeah. going around. And that was all like a Jesus trip down there, you know. Yeah. like And it was... Everything was all him and all like... It just, it was, it was so difficult to be down there. And I was like pursuing like what I felt he was telling me to do. Yeah. And like, I'm like hitting pastors up and they're like leaving me on red. Like, Hey, I'm yeah. homeless. Can you help me? Like, Hey, I'm eating a dollar in Taco Bell a day. Like I'm hungry. Like, and it, these, these things were just like, how could a place like really, really try to, and I mean, I was given like so much money in this church too. Yeah. It's like so much, like because it was like a big yeah. giving place too. Yeah. So I'm like, I don't, I don't know if it was me. Yeah. Sometimes you gotta be careful. You might be funding like, you know, fund funding like one of one of them pastors with a Rolls Royce. It, <laughs> you, gotta be, you gotta be careful. They be they be like blaming you like you're not submitted enough if you're not getting blessed. I'm like, how about I'm not working because I'm too busy with school. Yeah. Like I need to work. You know, yeah. I need to freaking eat you know, yeah. and pay rent and stuff, you know, like there was a point there that I was living in a two bedroom, two bathroom sure, apartment with six tables. dudes. Or we're like the prince. <laughs> Swear. No, <laughs> the they passage it would have flipped the tables. Strangest dynamics down there. Like what I thought that was like very, very amazing. It did solidify my faith more than anything though, yeah. because I was riding by the seat of my pants in a state that I'd never been to yeah. fresh out of the nest. If I was going to be homeless, it would be Florida. It was, it was worth it. Yeah. It I would nice. do Florida. So I could just pull up to the beach. Yeah. And go take a shower. You exactly. know, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah was, for sure. But, um, honestly sticking, sticking with the scripture, the Bible is like a daily bread for sure. Easy. It, and, uh, like reading books, I'm I'm reading uh, Abby's favorite book right now. It's The World Is on Fire, and we're still buying shoes. It's like honestly a uh, a book about like hype beast culture almost in fast fashion and yeah um, how badly these hide the Jordans to hide them put them away <laughs> put them away boys yeah. um, just how it's like affected the the earth and yeah. also like economy wise you yeah. know like there there's seriously people buying like. Walmart shipping containers that just are not even able to go to the stores because they're so full of stuff right now. Yeah. Like everything's like overproducing right now and we're overproducing everything. And um, like people are just able to get like tens of thousands of dollars worth of merchandise for like a couple grand, like buying these shipping containers just full of stuff and then reselling it on Amazon. Wow. And just like, have, like starting their own businesses and like rebranding stuff, you know, bringing Should literally like, Jesus. Grab a warehouse. No, seriously. I was like, I didn't even know you could do that. Yeah. And I was like, okay, so this is wild. I mean, at least it's getting distributed a little yeah. bit more than like what the big box stores can do and whatever. But yeah, um, the more that I've 
like thought about a lot of it like we're all we're both into like really sustainable like fashion stuff so like doing i want to do like a lot of organic stuff and like locally yeah. sourced like i'm um, really big into vintage tees right now bro i like i like a double xl triple xl vintage tee <laughs> you know what i mean kind of like a dress you know, exactly. No, that's walk like what I'm making in my office with a vintage tea on. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, the vintage teas are where it's at right now. Like even even just starting curated clothing yeah. stores, you know, that should be such an easy thing for people to start, you know, rather than like even a a big thrift store or whatever, you know. Or having yeah. like a new a new like weird clothing store come into town yes. from like some random person you know like but just like creating or like upcycling stuff and like yeah. just using what we have right now yeah. because it's like we have so much and we're like yeah we could be feeding people with these like cotton fields you know like the fields that are full of cotton for yeah. shirts that we don't need where you know we don't have them filled with like corn and potatoes and tomatoes and yeah you know like actually having like useful things yeah. you know and it, i mean we use a lot of the pieces of the cotton you know but it's now what did I want to, I guess I wanted to kind of see transitioning into, any, like, what are you most in love with right now? I kind of want to wrap up with, what are you most in love with? I feel like I've touched a lot. Yeah. I'm, I'm so in love with uh, traveling right now. And not even just traveling, but, like, meeting new people everywhere. Yeah. And like life traveling, like the, the, the process of the journey. It's, it's been so And it's more exciting. of an internal journey than it is external, like... It's that, that, like, nostalgic feeling of, like, man, I'm just in the moment. You know what I'm in love with? Is pushing myself past my comfort zone right now. And that has been the biggest game changer for me is, so I'm sitting in Rochester, and I told Abby, I'm like, yo, I'm going to go up to the city. I'm going to go busk today. Like, I'm going to go play my guitar at the public market. And I went up there, and I've never done that before. Like, I've never even been, like, in Rochester. So I'm, like, in downtown Rochester. I would... I feel like you should already be a millionaire. I would literally <laughs> take that voice and I would sit at fucking Times Square right down by the beach in Chicago. I'd leave my guitar case open and I would, I mean, dude, you, you could have been doing this since, I would have not gone to high school. I would have immediately, as soon as I knew I could have like sang like you, I would have exploited that immediately. I would have an OnlyFans where I'm just singing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like every area would be like exploited. I would do everything. That's been the, that's been the biggest thing to me is like, Waking up from my childhood, just watching, like, nobody do anything, like... Well, when you grow up kind of, like, in a broker area, like, even, like, even the richest people in, like, our area is, like, a hundred grand. You know what I mean? It's, <laughs> like, like, that's, like, very... Money. And it, like, limits you where it's, like, nothing... Like, I, in high school, was, like, there was a way that I could just make 50 grand a year. That was my dream. Like, dude, if I, I was going to go to the military, and I was, like... If I just survive and can go to the military <laughs> and like by 40, if I can make 50 grand a year, I'll be like set. You know what I mean? I can help my mom out or something like that. Yeah. It's like, you are right. Like it's, I can see why it's taken you to like really believe because it's like, it's like a, that fish tank theory. It's like put a shark, put a baby shark in like a four by four tank. It's not going to grow any bigger than fucking three feet. You yeah. know what I mean? But put it in the ocean. And that thing can grow to 30 feet. You know, it's like, that's we, what I'm doing. We did not grow up in an ocean. We grew up in like, a s- baby pond <laughs> you know I mean? yeah, bro and it's it's like big and the second that i started to go out and the second that i started to just like be like oh i gotta go like do these things yeah like like if i'm trying to do music i need to do music like yes. full time and full like time. i've been like oh i'll struggle i've been like i'm struggling for music but the thing was is i was struggling because i was working shitty jobs because yeah. i wanted to sit in my house and smoke yeah you know for like a year and, yeah. and I'm not going to even say that I wasted time, like, in Florida or anything, because that was, like, very directed movement. Yeah. And I needed to become, like, an adult, I yeah. guess, at some point, and have my brain cleared. So, like, going over to Jupiter and seeing intense wealth, you know, over there, and, yeah. like, everybody wealthy, you know, yeah. and they're all so nice and so happy, and, like, being on a beach, and, you know, I started my own social media marketing company over there, and, like did that I did telemarketing I did sales I worked with you know this guy and this guy yeah. and I lived with did you do life insurance but my ex did okay. she was she, I was about to get into it yeah. like I still have the book you know okay. like I was about to do it and um I was like that's actually like one of the things that was like my plan b you know like if yeah. music didn't work out and I've been saying if music didn't work out and it's because I just never even started. Like, how do you even know that it's not going to yeah. work out if it, you didn't fail? Like, after, like, five years of intense 
exactly. grinding That's and like five years. starving on the road. You yes. know, like I'm, exactly. I'm like, I'm on it. You yeah. know, like this yeah. is being in Chicago is on it. You know, yeah. like there was a, there was a change that happened even coming here. I'm yeah. like, I feel I'm hanging out with my best friend of three years that I, um, named Ken, he's a, his music, his handles teen blush on Spotify. Yeah. And, uh, one of my favorite artists that I'd like ever heard. Yeah, yeah. And I like had him on repeat, bro. And I hit him up on, uh, I got his Snapchat from his Instagram like years yeah. ago and um, he hit me up on uh, Snapchat and like sent an all message to everybody and it was just a demo that he was working on and I sent him back a demo he's like bro who the hell are you like call me so we ended up talking I was in Nashville at the time recording for a uh, country music artist named Jordan Davis I was doing a video yeah. work for him with a girl named Jacqueline Day and um, Ken and I talked from like 11 o'clock till like three in the morning um and then we like talked the whole next day and then we talked like the I whole next day i feel like that's day. the artist like power hour i feel like you guys are night owls I, i'm a night owl my bro. my ex would mix music and i think i sent her your demo because i'm really i'm like you i like i still love her maybe yeah. not in a romantic way but i would you know if she needed me like, I'd sure die for it you know what i mean but but uh has a beautiful voice mixes and, but she would always, like, I'd get back, I'd get up at four or five, you know what I mean? And yeah. She'd want me to, like, listen to her mixing it, like, she'd start at, like, 11, and I'm like, are you fucking insane? Like, I have to go to bed, you know what I mean? Like, I have to go to work, you know what I mean? <laughs> my dad was like, Bobby, you cannot, like, record vocals. I'm, like, in my room, like, green parts, like, yeah. screaming in my mic at, like, 11 at night, and then, like, no, it's that's not like, even just, that late, that's like dad. The, yeah, that's, like, the start time for you creatives, like... She would start being creative at eleven. It'd be like, we're like, what time did you go to bed? She'd be like, about uh, five. I was like, oh. <laughs> swear. And it wasn't like it's not like you guys are like up like drinking or doing anything. Not no. you, you literally. I don't know what it is. I mean, maybe don't it's like to. the dark or something where like it creates like this. You know, this it's like the free, like there's not because I think that a lot of artists have so ADHD. Quiet. Yeah, and it's like your FOMO's not active at night. Yeah. Like I don't feel like I need to be anywhere. I also have no stress at night like i yeah. know that everybody's asleep nobody's gonna need me on my phone yeah um you know nobody my like mom's not gonna need me at the like yeah. you know in the middle of the night or anything like that i'm i'm like literally it's just like me and this and all the honestly it's like you know your your people could be asleep you know like i can be by myself yeah like, i have to have that art time like i started to realize this abby and i've literally been on the road for almost like a month together now yeah and i like have no clue how I'm doing it. And it's been great. Like, yeah. she's she's so good and, like, reserved and quiet and she's peaceful and, like, yeah. I'm chaos <laughs> loud explosion ball boy, you know? Yeah. Like, and um, it just balances out really well. Finding somebody whose personality, like, balances yeah, yeah. out is really good. The, we got our cheat yeah. in it. Yeah, no, for real. It, it, it really is. And we were just saying that the other day. We're like, we, we really are like yin and yang here. Yeah. Like, I'm like the chaos boy. Like, yeah. And honestly, the way that um, a pastor of mine had described it, him and his wife were very different people. His wife was always like... Yeah. You know, and you like didn't like her really. <laughs> she was like, he was the craziest like entrepreneur, like yeah. pastor guy, like ran a massive church, you know, and very like I respect him like more than yeah. almost anybody. Because I, I just watched him. He was like, I'm a visionary and I dream. And then she manages me and keeps me on the rails. And yeah. if my dreams are pulling me off the ground, she pulls me down. You know, like, yeah. keeps me on the ground so that I can carry these dreams. Yeah, you know? yeah. But, like, holds me here and, like, is also, like, doing the things that need to be done. Yeah. You know, that I can't focus on, you know. like yeah. So having that uh, ability to... Um, you know, rely on yeah. her, it, but also to learn, you know, because like to learn both parts, I don't think it's just to like rely on people, yeah. you know, for everything. I think it's like, I can learn responsibility and like, yeah. like tidiness and organization from her. Whereas like, she's learning how to be like a free spirit yeah. and like be free and like not lack peace. Like yeah. I always have peace, bro. Like yeah. Unless I've drank like sixteen shots of espresso in the morning and I'm having a panic attack. Oh my because, God. <laughs> yeah. But I I quit nicotine and I actually nicotine halves the effects of caffeine. Yeah. It was like a medical study. I was like, why is caffeine affecting me so badly now? Like I would go out to coffee with like business owners and stuff yeah. and I'd be like like freaking yeah, out, bro. I can't do the coffee. <laughs> and uh it, it I just do black coffee. Oh yeah, black coffee's the best. 
I, yeah. And then it turned out that nicotine like halves that. So whenever I quit nicotine, I'm like drinking like two pots of coffee in the morning. Yeah. And I'm like wondering why I'm like having a panic attack. It's because I have like 500 milligrams of coffee like yeah. running through my veins at like 6 a.m. Yeah. On an empty stomach. I was like, all right, so I got to get my, I had to get my body in order. Like even pull back my caffeine intake. I literally took back everything. Bro. Yeah. And like that made a huge difference to me. That's honestly being obedient to like God telling me to like quit those things. Like, yeah definitely put me on the right track and also put me in the right head space to like so good get to where I needed to because yeah. I wouldn't be traveling I'd be wasting my money on yeah like stupid stu- like stupid shit yeah if it don't make you money don't do it that's what I tell people so as we wrap up what all you want to shout out what's on your heart <sighs> whatever you want I gotta start doing this at the beginning too because I have like eight viewers so we gotta get them in the beginning yeah because my mom will probably listen this far I don't know who else will <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, shout out to um, Tristan for like doing. You're supposed to shout you out. <laughs> well, no, I'm shouting you out. Shout out to Tristan for like growing like bigger than I ever could have even imagined. You know, like, th- like big big bro moment for real. Like, um, inspired me greatly. Uh, even seeing him since like the first year he started into this stuff and. Um, doing work with Simon and also shout out to Simon for seeing the potential and greatness in Tristan too. Um, that's like real G move. And, um, uh, I'd like to shout out, um, just my new single that's coming out. Uh, it's going to be kind of a problem. You can find me on Bobby Taylor music on Spotify, Apple music, YouTube, whatever. My new single's called pollen. It's out now. Um, it's been out for a couple weeks now, probably a month or two, but, um, I'm still pushing that and, um, don't, uh, don't succumb to pride and stay humble, work really hard, be diligent in your craft and hone, hone every craft that you do. Don't just work on one thing because it's like putting all your eggs in one basket, like moving to different things if you can't stay focused is perfectly fine and uh because by the time you're 30 you're gonna have 50 different crafts that are like honed you know things that you've gotten bored with doing you know you come back to like um doing music producing like i do yeah. like electronic music i produce for rappers i yeah and i'm like nah screw it i'm going back to rock and roll you know like just bouncing around to everything yeah. like you can't get bored and you can't get you know, things get boring and there's a time yeah. that to grind past that and past that burnout for sure. Yeah. And um, it's just such a fragile walk to just take care of yourself and like make sure that you're at peace yeah. too, you know, to take care of your body and not to overwork yourself either. Because oh, it's like that that burnout is crippling if it hits at the right time and it hits with the right emotional circumstances, you know. Yeah. Because you can like fight through burnout and I like fought through burnout so many times and like that's like really hard for like ADHD people too is like that's like yeah. a really common thing is like intense burnout from like doing the same thing but um I don't identify with that and I say I'm bigger than that and I, I take it as a big um a big power up is having the ability to do so many different things and to yeah. have so many things going on in my brain you know just to yes. control it and harness that energy to be like I think it's really just being a creative person. Yeah. I genuinely think it's unharnessed creativity. But, um, yeah, love Jesus. Let him love you. And um, he does love you. And that's changed everything in my life. It's taken me to new places. It's gotten me out of Pittsburgh. It's, he's given me everything that I've needed genuinely and um, has allowed me to really enjoy my life, even with, like, such minimal effort yeah. to... You know, and and to also, like, if you're pursuing a craft and you're like, I don't know, like, where I'm going and I don't know what to do, like, just rewind into, you know, God, like, show me what you want me to do and and put the people in front of me that I need to do and show me how you want me to live my life. And if I'm doing things that are, you know, hurting me, you know, that's literally what sin is, is just death, you know. It, it's just like bringing death into yourself and like yeah. God just like freed us from that, uh, that grip of like having death come on to us, yeah. you know, and, and tempt us into like 
bringing death on ourselves, you know, and he wants us to live long lives and prosper and yeah. um, gives us a hope and a future, you yeah. know, anything bigger than anything we could ever ask, think, or imagine. Yeah. And uh, did you ever ask or think that you'd ever be at this point? No, I just was grateful I was alive. And I, I like <laughs> watch, eat. I watch what, where you're at and I see like where my heart's at and I like, feel like my heart's at where your heart was at like the first year that yeah. you like started this. Yeah. And like it should it should it have taken this long? Maybe it didn't need to take this long, you know. Yeah. I don't come down on myself for the amount of time. I feel like I'm still like twelve freaking years old. So yeah, it's like yeah. We're always gonna be young at heart. I'm like I'm not worried that I'm twenty four. If you the know? soil isn't right the seed won't play. It was just God getting your soil ready, bro. You know what I mean? Took long enough for me to yeah. say, "I'll oh, all right, you yeah. can you can <laughs> wrote it till my shit." <laughs> yeah, just gotta get the soil right. Well, Sweet. another episode of AK in the book. Shout out Bobby Taylor music. Let's go. Appreciate. Follow Aiden Hill too on IG. My podcast. My IG boy. is not Bobby T. Also, not Bobby T. Yep. Hopefully, you guys know how to spell that. It's like the easiest thing in the world. <laughs> Let's go. Peace. <laughs>